Okay, here's the timing mark on a 2.3 liter 1994 B2300 Mazda, same as Ford Ranger. Right there is the mark here on the plastic cover. This is the cam sprocket. This particular year, 1994 and before, there's a little uh, cast arrow here. On some later models, there's actually a triangle on this ring. For this one, it's the cast feature right here. And if I take a 19 millimeter socket here and turn this over, there's 90 degrees. There's 90 degrees. There's 90 degrees. That's where the lobes kind of want to be. That's where the valves are shut for one of the cylinders. So, if there wasn't a mark on there, you really got about four places it could be. And there it is. So if I go through like this, it'll stay there. It'll stay over to here, but that's where it is. This particular model down here, I got the seal down in there for the crankshaft. I don't have the crankshaft sprocket on yet. It has a mark right there. I'll zoom in. That's the key. And then the feature on this particular model, that's the belt guard. Okay, here's the mark. This is a sprocket. This side here faces the seal, so it goes back. This is the front, which is flat. And there's a little mark right there that is also on the belt guard that goes on here. So the sprocket's about in the roughly the 12 o'clock position. And the key is actually on the first. When I say key, the timing mark, excuse me. This particular one on the belt guard is a, there's a line that's kind of like uh, etched, not etched, just kind of scratched into it. And it didn't show up until I sanded this because this went underwater in Katrina and this is one that I had a devil to pull us off. So there it is on the sprocket. There, which I put red with some model airplane paint. There's a line right there. And that didn't show up until I really sanded that down. So it goes on like that. And you got the hub that goes on over there and then the harmonic bolt balancer. There's the mark right there it goes toward. Right there. Lines up with this. Okay, after putting the seal on, I found on the crankshaft sprocket, it would only go on to about right there and get stuck. It did earlier before I put the seal on, so I may have, may have nicked it, and so I put some Sharpie and some other stuff on and found out there was a nick right on the side of the keyway. So I had to take a file and just cut off sand right in here and now this will just slide all the way in. The concave side goes toward the block. This goes on here like this. And if this doesn't line up with here, you can put the hub on and actually turn this by hand. You can put this on here just temporarily. I can just turn this by hand to get it lined up. So that mark is lined up with here. It was off just a little bit. I'm going to take all this off and put some grease on there so if I do this again hopefully it's not going to be stuck on there.
it was stuck on so bad that you could basically pull, lift the whole truck up by this sprocket. The puller force was so high because it was just drug it off, it was just rusted completely on there. Okay, here's the Company 23 little tensioner gizmo. Got a real long bar here. Was you able to pull that over and then get the belt on there? I'm gonna turn this over by hand a few times. Take the gizmo off. Release the tension on there. Make sure that it's still lined up after it's the belt's on, because you can be off a tooth. It's normally is over here. The tool goes on the end of the spring. Then when you're not using it, you stick it in this hole here. So that's just a storage location for the pivot. That's a 3 8 inch drive. So it pivots like this. And that's the piece you put in there goes into here okay there's the mark lined up with here you got the mark down here lined up with this I still got the tool in place but what can happen is that once you release the tension you can be off here so what I do is I've got this just slipped on here and I get this set to where it needs to be you just turn this by hand and I don't have the bracket on yet and once I release the tension this was off about a tooth so what I did is I marked with the sharpie here where the word Daco was to here then I'll relieve the tension and at the same time I took a 19 millimeter ratchet moved this over one tooth rotated this around because what happens is when the belt tightens up it's going to go ahead and move some of the stuff around so these marks are after the belt is in place and tensioned up so just be aware if you got all this lined up put the belt on and you get the tensioner on here this can move about a tooth so I had to rotate this uh, clockwise by about one tooth the word Daco here. The AYCO was from here to here in the black. And once I relieved the tension, it was off. So I went through this, moved this over, and got it to grab the next tooth over. And now I'm all lined up. There's that. And there's this one. That's on a 94. And you don't want to crank this up with the, with the bracket loose. You know, tear, the, tear the sensor off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around by hand. Just make sure that the uh, timing stays. And make sure the belt isn't going to jump off. So also i got some crap here in the auxiliary bracket. i got to brush off. I'm going to take off my tool and then tighten this up so even though I had the, this cool tool here I had to do it a couple times to get the alignment on here because once you get the belt on here you get the stretch it's going to go ahead and rotate this around a grunt so I was off a tooth some of the forms tell you that to do it one tooth away so after it's set it's proper and so live and learn okay you can use a 19 millimeter socket grab the hub I turned this over a couple of times I got the mark still line up which is good this hub isn't even hooked on yet just using it to it's not in gear right now but just using it to make sure that the marks are okay I'm going to put the bolt in here on the tensioner the other one 
holds it down in the slot. What's weird, these had RTV in it. I'm going to put RTV back, but I don't know if it goes through the block like the water housing does. But I'm going to do it just because that's the way Ford did it uh, when I had this done at the Ford dealer. So I don't know if they're, if they're using it for a cheap Loctite or what. But there's a new tensioner, gold spring, and get the belt on there. Now i got to bolt the bracket back in and then adjust this so it's got the right gap. You don't want to crank this up because you're going to ruin the bracket. So I'm going to put the bracket back on and then get this with the proper gap in here so it doesn't touch. That's the uh, hall sensor, crank position sensor. This is on 94. 95's got a different hub, different sensor. There's a bunch of slots on the 95. And then the cover is different than the 95. Yeah, this is the belt guard piece that actually goes between the hub and the sprocket there. And I didn't have it on because this I was just putting on this temporary to turn the engine over with a wrench. And I got to make sure this is all, these holes are all not gummed up before I put it on. But that part goes into there. 